Hi, ArcfieldWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Thursday morning, January 13th. We have a major storm that will impact the eastern third of the nation in the Sunday-Monday time frame. Everything on the table here from accumulating snow to ice to rain uh, to strong winds, coastal flooding, all of this can happen in the Sunday-Monday time frame somewhere in the eastern third of the nation. We'll go into the, uh, the latest model run from the GFS at 0Z and uh, what we're looking for over the next day or two or three. We still have a few days to go before this event. The main wave of interest here is just now coming ashore in the Pacific Northwest. Computer forecast models tend to handle these kind of waves a little bit better once they move over the land mass because there's better uh, observing stations once you get on uh, shore here and this is a water vapor loop from the University of Wisconsin site and right here you can see the spin in the atmosphere this is the west coast of Washington and Oregon and here is the upper level wave that is the wave that will dive to the south and east over the next 24, 48, 72 hours or so riding along in the southern branch of the jet stream and it will help to spawn a storm in the southeastern states by uh, Sunday morning or so. That storm then turns northeast and moves near the east coast. It still looks like it may take a little bit of an inland track once it gets uh, to about the I-95 uh, corridor region of the mid-Atlantic region and that uh, may spare the immediate I-95 corridor with the heaviest of the snowfall uh, but still uh, some accumulating front end snow likely for DC, Philadelphia, and New York City. And there's still time for this thing to shift to the east a little bit, which could make all the difference in the world for the immediate I 95 corridor region. I will say up front here that the ensemble runs for the GFS continue to show a little bit farther of a south and east track compared to the operational run. Sometimes that uh, uh, tells you that a trend will develop. Uh, leading uh, the operational run more towards the ensemble run and we'll see if that happens over the next couple of days but again the main wave is just now coming ashore in the Pacific Northwest. Well let's now take a look at the vorticity field. This is, these are areas in the upper part of the atmosphere that have kind of a rotation or spin and they can lead to upward motion down at the surface level. In other words uh, these areas of vorticity can lead to surface low uh, development, precipitation, and th these are the areas of interest. Here it is, right here now, approaching the northwest coastline. This is the main wave of interest uh, that will help to uh, generate this storm system for the eastern third of the nation by the time we get into the Sunday-Monday time frame. Let's move forward from Thursday morning, and it does kind of team up with another wave up to its north. These two kind of combine, phase in together by the time we get to the early part of the week. And here we are by Saturday morning. And here is the main wave of interest here, moving from just offshore of the Pacific Northwest coastline to the South Central Plains by the time we get to Saturday morning. Then kind of swings through the southern states and starts to move to the north and east. With it, surface low pressure will develop in the southeastern states and then start to move to the north and east during the day on Sunday. Here we are all the way out to Monday morning, sitting right on top of the mid-Atlantic region. Notice there is a little bit of energy behind it as well. The interaction between these two could have a role later in the upcoming weekend or the early part of next week. Now another important factor here is that it will turn progressively colder in the northeastern states Friday into Saturday, all thanks to high pressure building across the southeastern part of Canada. Today, a little bit milder than yesterday, a little bit above normal, but watch what happens here over the next 24 to 48 hours or so. Much colder air starts to pour into the northeastern quadrant of the nation and really the eastern third of the nation. Uh, uh, enters in a cool down period from Friday going into Saturday. This is the 850 millibar anomaly map from the Zero Z GFS model run for Friday night going into the day on Saturday right here. Saturday itself, a very cold day up across New England even into the Mid-Atlantic region, way below normal for this time of the year 
and that cold air will hold on for a while and exactly how long it holds on before it can retreat to the north and east will dictate how much frozen precipitation can fall in such areas as the I-95 Carter region, for example, D.C., Philadelphia, New York City. Here it is Sunday morning, and then we have the storm starting to push to the north and east. A warm, moist influx of air on the warm side of the storm to the south and east of the uh, storm track. Colder air rushes in behind it immediately, and here all the way out to Monday morning, storm pushing up to the north and east, colder air behind it. Could actually be front end accumulating snow with this system. Places like D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, and then perhaps even on the back end, uh, after the low pressure area pushes off to the north and east, cold air can wrap in behind it and change precipitation back to snow. Well, another map I wanted to show before we take a look at the surface forecast maps, this is what's called the precipitable water anomaly map it's from the GFS model run at 0Z, and the green uh, indicates where it's more moist than normal. And just wanted to point out, the reason this is such a, uh, has a lot of potential to put down a lot of snow is there's a tropical connection. We're going to have tropical, very moist air feeding into this storm system and it, once that pushes to the north and west into a retreating arctic air mass, some areas can get absolutely hammered by snow on the order of one to two feet. Right now it looks like maybe western Virginia, up across western and central Pennsylvania, maybe in the northeastern PA, western New York could be in that prime zone area for significant snowfall. Again, the tropical connection here. Look at this fetch of air here coming all the way from the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean Sea, all the way up the eastern seaboard and it will wrap into this storm system at the same time as Arctic air in this area right here. And with this kind of an influx of tropical air, it does a few things. First of all, it adds to the chances of coastal flooding and heavy rainfall, places like New Jersey coastline, Delmarva Peninsula. It adds to the possibility of uh, uh, high winds, maybe even potentially damaging wind gusts, onshore type winds, southeast winds, for example that same region, the coastal New Jersey, Delmarva Peninsula. And as this warm, moist air uh, overrides that Arctic uh, air mass, it can certainly result in a significant snow event. Let's say portions right here of western uh, Pennsylvania, central Pennsylvania, maybe even uh, all the way up into western New York State. Well, let's draw this again with uh, a pencil marking here. It's a little easier. I think right now the, the heaviest snow looks like it's destined for this kind of territory right just to the west of Washington, D.C. Maybe 30, 40, 50 miles to the west of D.C. They'll get significant snow as compared to in the metro area itself. But western Virginia, uh, western Pennsylvania, central Pennsylvania, maybe all the way up into the Poconos, western New York State right now uh, could be in the prime zone for the heaviest snowfall. Of course, it's three days away, three plus days away. This could shift one way or another. And again, tropical moisture feeding in to this retreating Arctic air mass into the Mid-Atlantic Northeast, at least the interior Mid-Atlantic and Northeastern part of the nation. Well, let's now walk through the surface forecast maps from the Zero Z GFS. Again, a mild day today. In D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, high temperatures this afternoon in the 40s. But that's a short-lived warm-up. We, we start to get a, a, a stiffening wind on Friday. One storm we've been talking about that should stay off the East Coast looks continues to look like it will stay off to the East Coast. But colder air starts to uh, push in on Friday. And it's a pretty stiff north-to-northeast wind here throughout the eastern states in the with this key player here, high pressure building into southeastern Canada, by the time we get to Saturday morning, you'll have a strong high across southeastern Canada. You have very cold air pouring down the Appalachians into the Middle Atlantic region, the northeast U.S., many areas uh, up across New England, single digits by the time we get to Saturday morning. Then we push forward. Here comes the development of the storm. By the time we get to Sunday morning in the southeastern states, Again, we mentioned up top that this major storm system will have everything you could think of 
accumulating snow, freezing rain, sleet, rain, some of it heavy, uh, strong winds as well. And here we go, we got all these colors here representing all, all of the above. Snow in blue, freezing rain and uh, sleet in pink and purple here, heavy rain in yellow and plain rain in green here. Here's that Arctic high up across New England by Sunday morning, still uh, a pretty entrenched Arctic air mass, and it will begin to retreat to the north and east, but it will be reluctant to do so, and that leads to what could turn out to be a pretty good front-end thumping of snow uh, in D.C., for example, uh, uh, before any kind of a changeover, and then in Philadelphia and New York City by later in the day on Sunday. Again, accumulating front-end snow quite likely from this system, even if it takes an inland track. Uh, in places like D.C. Uh, all the way up to New York City. And the heaviest snow uh, to the west of D.C., let's say 50 miles to the west, uh, 75 miles to the west, in western Virginia, up across western and central Pennsylvania, could be in store in this portion of the Mid-Atlantic region, the interior higher elevation portion of uh, maybe one to two feet of snow is possible in some of these areas. And again, we're still three days away, so that Prime zone could shift a little bit one way or another, uh, even into the I-95 corridor region. It's not out of the question that that kind of shift takes place here over the next couple of days. Here we are now by Monday morning, and don't be surprised if there's a, a changeover back to snow in some of those I-95 corridor regions that indeed begin as snow and then change over to a mix, ice and rain could end up changing back to snow on the back end here. Then we go all the way through the day on Monday, and it pushes up to the north and east. Colder air pours in behind it by the time we get to Monday night and Tuesday. So still looking like a major storm system will have a high impact on a large area of the eastern third of the nation in the Sunday-Monday time frame. Still a few days to go, so stay tuned to arcfieldweather.com for updates not only later today but over the next few days as well. Again, please visit arcfieldweather.com. That's it for now. I'm meteorologist Paul Dorian.